China's anti-satellite weapons can strike GPS satellites, guide your navigation apps, communication satellites powering your bank transactions, and spy satellites protecting U.S. forces. A single attack could disrupt global transportation, finance, and defense. So here's the situation. The PLA has developed kinetic missiles, ground-based lasers, and cyber tools to disable or destroy satellites. Recent examples include 2022 Xijian-21 satellite maneuver, which repositioned a defunct satellite, and the 2024 Xilong space plane operations, demonstrating proximity tactics. In 2007, China's SC-19 missile destroyed a satellite, leaving over 3,000 debris pieces that still threaten spacecraft. Today's systems are far more advanced, capable of targeting the satellites that power GPS navigation, military comms, financial networks, and emergency services. This arms race didn't emerge overnight. China's strategy to dominate space stems from a clear motive and uncovering it reveals how the next conflict could unfold. China's military strategists call space the commanding heights of warfare. Why? Because they've identified America's Achilles heel, our complete dependence on satellite for military superiority. Here's how China sees it. American military dominance comes from precision, precision guided munitions, real-time intel, global comms, all of it flows through satellites. The PLA's system destruction warfare doctrine doesn't target individual soldiers or tanks. It targets the networks that make modern militaries function. Cut the satellite links, and America's $800 billion military becomes a collection of expensive, disconnected hardware. This strategy was crystallized during the 1991 Gulf War, when China watched American satellite-guided weapons demolish Iraq's military in days. China's strategists realized they couldn't match America's conventional firepower, but they could attack the satellites that make it possible. So the trigger for today's space weapons program was Taiwan. Every war game shows that if China invades Taiwan, American satellites will coordinate the response. So China built weapons to eliminate those satellites before shooting starts. Understanding the why reveals the how. China didn't just decide to target our satellites. They built specific weapons for specific targets. So let's break down the arsenal they've created to turn space into a shooting gallery. China has five ways to kill a satellite. Smash it, blind it, jam it, hack it, or grab it. Each weapon targets a specific orbit, and together they can shut down America's space-based military in the first hours of conflict. So looking at these five methods, the first one is kinetic kill. The SC-19 and DN series missiles launch from mobile platforms and physically destroy satellites in low Earth orbit and beyond. They aren't precision weapons, they create a debris cloud and threaten everything in orbit. The second method is direct energy. China operates ground-based lasers from facilities including Changchun that can permanently blind satellite sensors or temporarily dazzle them. The advantage is no debris, there's no evidence. The third method, electronic warfare. More jammers deployed across China can disrupt GPS signals and satellite communications. They've already tested it in South China Sea, where ships reported GPS failures during Chinese exercises. Fourth method, cyber attacks. The PLA Strategic Support Force targets satellite ground stations and control systems. Why destroy a satellite when you can take control of it? And the final and fifth method is co-orbital weapons. So satellites like the Xijing-21 maneuver close to other spacecraft with robotic arms that can grapple, disable, or destroy targets. The 2024 Xinlong space plane demonstrated this capability by approaching and inspecting other satellites without warning. This isn't just about military satellites. These weapons threaten the civilian systems that run the global economy. When China pulls the trigger on space, the consequences cascade far beyond the battlefield. So picture this, it's day one of a Taiwan crisis. China launches ASAT strikes, GPS fails regionally, air traffic diverts, financial markets experience delays as trading systems lose timing synchronization. These aren't theoretical scenarios, they're based on our satellite dependency. In the opening hours of conflict, China's strategy is paralysis. Jam GPS to ground precision weapons, hack communication satellites and isolate commanders, blind reconnaissance satellites to prevent targeting. But there's a catch. Kinetic ASAT strikes create the Kessler effect, cascading debris collisions that make entire orbital regions unusable for decades. China's own satellites become victims. The 2007 test created a debris field that forced the International Space Station to dodge fragments for years. The U.S. response is already underway. Proliferated satellite constellations, instead of a few expensive, vulnerable satellites, 
America's launching hundreds of cheaper ones. The Space Development Agency's transport layer puts 500 plus satellites in orbit by 2026. Lose 10, 15, even 50 satellites and the network still functions. We're also developing our own space weapons. The X-37B space plane, mysterious orbital maneuvers and directed energy programs that mirror China's capabilities. This arms race is accelerating with India, Russia and others joining the competition. The next war won't start with tanks crossing borders, they'll start in space. 400 kilometers above our heads with weapons most people don't know exist, targeting systems most people don't think about. Space warfare is a strategic reality. China's ASAT weapons are operational, America's response is launching, and the rest of the world is choosing sides in an arms race that will define the next century of conflict. If you want to stay ahead of these developments, subscribe, hit the notifications. On Monday, we'll be launching our video on the Chinese uh, economy and how the strength or weakness of its economy can determine which military action to follow with Taiwan. Sigma Actual, out.